Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to your channel. And today we are going to be checking out the Aerofora Aero 2 Pro Mini PC. So let's get started. First off, I want to thank Aerofora for sending this over to me for a review. And you're actually going to be seeing a lot more mini PC reviews coming to this channel. And if there's any particular test that you want me to perform on these little guys, let me know down in the comments below. Now, I'm starting to take a big interest into these mini PCs because they are getting to the point where you can actually do a lot with these guys, not just use them as placeholders for media players or anything like that. They're getting to a point where you're seeing Ryzen 7s, dedicated GPUs, and in a small form factor like this. So we're gonna be seeing a lot more of that stuff coming in the near future. Now, my second goal of other than testing a lot of these mini PCs are to find one that will be very suitable for Steam Deck. Basically, I want to build my own Steam Deck using one of these mini PCs and basically slapping Arch Linux in here and doing everything that Steam Deck would do to build out one of these guys to their handheld players. Now, as much as I like the fact of handheld PCs, um, I cramp up. Like I could play for one hour before my hands gets tired and sweaty and I can't be staring at a screen playing games on a handheld device anymore. So I would like to build one of these guys to hook up to a bigger screen and use it like a console or a Steam Deck basically on a bigger screen with my own controller. So that's my, that's my goal. And I do want to run and test a lot of these mini PCs to see how far I could take it. This particular one, which is the Aero 2 Pro mini PC, is not particularly made for gaming, more for productivity, but we're gonna go through all the specs to see if it's something that you guys could use. Now, now to start off, I actually really like this build. It's very, very small. It's 120 millimeters by 120 millimeters by 20 millimeters onto the side. So it actually like, it's almost the size of my hand and it weighs about one and a half pound, maybe two pounds, but it's very sturdy and built. The entire case is aluminum, except for the front and rear panels, which those are plastic, which allows for actually pretty good Wi-Fi reception. The antennas are actually built into the front. This guy also has a ton of connections. So if you want to use this for any type of player or presentation device, uh, you can do so. Now in the front of this guy is just a black panel and there's a LED slot just to know that the device is running or not. On one side, you have the VGA, which I really do like that they kept the VGA because there's still a lot of projectors and a lot of monitors that still uses the VGA. So it's nice that they kept this if you do decide to put this on a big screen or use it for presentation. Now in the back of this guy, you have the reset, uh, the two-in-one headphone and mic jack, the gigabit ethernet LAN port, full-size HDMI, USB 3, and then a 5.5 millimeter 12 volt barrel plug. Then on the other side, you have the power button, two more USB 3s, and then a SD card slot. This is also the same area where the heat will come out. So this is an active cool system. It has a fan built in, which is extremely quiet because I'm running my benchmarks and I barely hear this thing spin off. Now, about mini PCs, the good and bad side to it is that yes, while it retains a very small footprint, there are limiting factors like what you can do with this, what you can put into this, et cetera, et cetera. Like this one in particular, the RAM is soldered on, so I can't upgrade the RAM, but there is a slot for the SSD. So you can actually replace the SSD with uh, something a lot bigger. Now, as far as the specs on this guy, this is running an Intel Celeron 11th Gen N5105, base speed at two gigahertz, turbo booster 2.9. It also runs Intel UHD GPU, which is not particularly fast, but able to do 4K at 60 frames per second. This model has eight gigs of RAM DDR4 and has a 256 gigabyte SSD. Also supports 802.11ac, so you get the 2.4 gigahertz and also the five gigahertz with this. And I got actually really good reception and speed with this. Now for the disassembly of this guy, there are seven screws underneath, um, yes, yeah, seven four on the outer sides, which actually retains the plastic panels, and then the three on the bottom that actually holds the motherboard down. After removing all the screws, you could actually just slide it out from one end and you, it reveals the entire motherboard and that's where you could upgrade the SSD. The SSD that they're using is 2242 size. It's smaller than the typical SSDs, but it is accessible. Now to get to the good stuff, here are the benchmarks. For Cinebench R20, you get 676, which is actually not that bad. It's actually pretty powerful compared to a lot of the older devices that I got on the Intel Celerons, which is the 
N4100s and stuff like that. But yeah, this does have four cores and it runs really well on processing stuff. Now, Heavenly Benchmark, I got a score of 337, which is not surprising to me because it doesn't have that great of a GPU. Even though it's on an 11th gen, it doesn't have the newer uh, Intel Iris GPUs. For the read speed on the SSD, it's 494 megabytes, and for the write, it's 433 megabytes, which is pretty good. It's actually not that bad. PC mark score, which surprised me the most, is 2,838, which means this could do a lot of multitasking, browser, Skype, a ton of stuff. Just for productivity, that score, anything above 2,000 is actually pretty good for productivity-wise. With the 8 gigs of RAM and everything, productivity-wise, it's actually pretty good. 3D Mark score is 350, which is not that great um, compared to a lot of GPUs that predates this CPU. Um, yeah, that score is pretty low, 350. For Geekbench single core test, you got 624, and for multi core test, is 1911. Now, I don't have much to compare to, and I don't want to take the old data that I have from previously, which you could see probably on a older video, just because those are more SBCs. This is dedicated for a mini PC. So I'm starting a brand new list, and this is the first on it. Now, I was able to play older titled games on this pilot, machine, um, not at high frame rates, but I was able to play older games. Track. Now, for the newer games like Forza 5 or Age of Empires 4, it would actually not even run. In Age of Empires, it was actually complaining that this was missing the, the AVX instructions, so I wasn't even actually able to turn that game on on this device. As far as emulation goes, I was able to test PS2, and it actually ran pretty well. I didn't have any issues running PS2 on this guy. So, so in conclusion, if you are going to use this for a uh, Media Center to play Netflix, uh, Plex, uh, anything that has to do with media, this will be great. It does 4K, no problem. It runs videos just fine. But once you get into anything that has to do with gaming or GPU heavy instructions, uh, yeah, this will be lacking. Now, as far as the price point on this guy, for this particular model with 8 gigs of RAM and 256 gigabytes of SSD storage, uh, it runs 279, which is, in my opinion, a pretty good price point. Anyway, that is it for me, guys. If you guys have any questions about this particular device, let me know down in the comments below, as well as any particular test that you want to see moving forward tested on these mini PCs, let me know. Uh, I also want to know if you guys want to see Linux on these because I, what they normally ship with will be Windows 10 or Windows 11. I'm more of a Linux guy, so I would want to dump Linux into here and test it out. And I will be doing that if I find a particular one that has similar specs to the Stream Deck. So that will be happening in the future. But for these mini PCs that are just for media centers, let me know if you guys want to see Linux built into these as well. Anyway, if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.